Well, speaking of controversy, not just over Green Mountain, but over another G, Google. Its latest attempt to break into the world of social networking. Now, it, it recently updated what it calls its social circle networking tool. Now, what this does, if you have a Gmail account, it allows you to view the names and social connections of complete strangers, and it is automatic. You don't need to sign up for it. Is social circle an invasion of privacy, or is Google simply connecting dots and providing a service that's valuable to users and you do on your own another way, or if they didn't, someone else would do it instead? Noah Kravitz is editor-at-large for Techno Buffalo. Michael Furtick is CEO of Reputation.com and an expert on Internet security. Noah, let me start with you. Could you just explain in very simple English and, uh, uh, what social circle does, an example of what it would do? Sure, Aaron. So, um, you know, as you said, Google uh, has sort of been rolling out these tools for a while, and, and their latest update to their social uh, tool is Social Search, which basically lets you, um, and this is where you actually do have choice in the matter, uh, if you're signed into your Google account, you can choose to connect uh, other social networking accounts, so Twitter, uh, Flickr, which is a photo sharing service, uh, Quora, which is kind of a, a question and answer sort of um, uh, crowdsource knowledge database product. Mm -hmm. and. If you were signed in and you and I were connected and you did a search for, say, um, awesome bald guys, in your search <laughs> results, you might get back, you know, an article with a little tag underneath it that said, Noah Kravitz uh, tweeted about this yesterday or, or that sort of thing. So it's, it's kind of connecting the dots, like you said, but blending it into what, what Google does best, which mm -hmm. is search results. Okay, all right. So I, I, that means so it's not just in other words your friend, but friends of friends who know your friend suddenly know what you said, and all of a sudden you, people can see some of the privacy concerns. I guess Michael. I mean, but but Google's point would be uh, this is going someone's going to connect these dots, or the individual person could find this on their own, so they're not doing anything that violates privacy. Do you buy it? Well, I'll tell you, Google has had some form of social search since 2009. They're really trying to chase Facebook's tail, and so they are still letting people opt into this searchability. So if you have a Google profile, you can link in different parts of your social profile to yes, it. Yeah, like and then you was can saying, so your, you do kind of choose in a sense, yeah. right? Yeah, you can choose. I think that Google's on the risk, uh, on the precipice of a big risk, however. So, so Google, the, 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 evil, the evil stepchild version of this story would be if Google actually opted everybody in to the machine by doing a broad search of the web, using their massive index to connect the dots so that, you know, the people at work now know that you're a big Trekkie or people at work now know that you're into some kind of extracurricular activity you don't, that, you don't want them to big know if. about. Yeah, so, but that's, that has not happened yet. And so, so they, they got a big knockdown mm -hmm. from the FTC over the Google Buzz a few months ago. Right. And they seem to have stepped back from that precipice to be a little bit more careful right now. Now, we reached out to the FTC, which did, uh, did obviously come after them on Google Buzz. Uh, FTC did not, uh, did not give us a response. Google did, which we'll, which we'll uh, put up on the screen. But, Noah, how, is this really different than Google Buzz, which the FTC had a problem with? Or are we now looking at uh, this latest functionality being something that the FTC will also uh, put the clamps on. Well, you know, FTC aside, Google Buzz was a massive fail in, in the public, so, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, but no, I mean, I think, I think what, you know, what you said was a big if. And, and the key here is there's responsibility on the user's end as well. Um, you know, basically, anytime you sign up for a service, uh, a lot of times after you get a new product, if you activate uh, a Google Android smartphone, for that matter, um, you are linking accounts you are linking accounts to potentially depending on how much you share over share online a lot of personal information but you always have to opt in and people need to be a little bit more careful you know obviously the company should get a hold you know rein in the 50 page terms of services people are trying to read on a three inch screen but the users have to be more careful about what they're signing up for what they're opting into and especially what they're sharing online Michael, is this, is this just the way the world is going to go, though? I mean, if not Google, then fill in the blank, right? There is just not going to be any privacy out there. So, so this is what worries me. You're exactly right. What worries me is that we are sacrificing our privacy. I think that this is a moment to actually recognize that Google has done something that could threaten our privacy, but actually has given us the option to opt in. They have not opted us in by default. A lot of the social networking sites, including the most famous ones, have been opting us in by default or kind of 
of sort of tricking us into opting in. And Google is actually giving us an option here. I want everyone to understand, though, that if you do opt into this, different parts of your life that you had no idea were going to be connected will now be connected for anyone to see. Google is still giving us the option on this case, and we should, rec we should applaud that in this case. All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much.